Hey, it's Toxbird, and welcome to my best build for 1.5. I've been grinding my life away, and I've finally gotten some good I can call a decent build. So I'm going to show you guys what it is, and give you tips on how to make the build better, and show you guys ways you can get some cool gear yourself. This build is nothing short of a beast in both PvE and PvP, so I'm really excited to show all of you. So this is the build. This is what the build is going to be. It's four alpha bridge and two high ends. Given that some of the pieces here are really hard to get, looking at you, Lorray Baird's chest piece, I'll have a few other combinations of gear that'll still be as effective as this one. So let's go on to the first piece of gear. It is the chest piece. Yes, this chest piece. Barrett's Bulletproof Vest. Barrett's Bulletproof. No skills on cooldown increases skill power by 10%. One skill on cooldown increases damage by 5%, and two skills on cooldown increases armor by 10%. I'll just demonstrate what the bonuses are in terms of this build. Right now, you're seeing about 118,000 skill power. Regularly, I would have about 108,000. Now, when I use my heal, what it does is it increases the base damage on my M4. It's regularly about 20,000. It goes up to 20.9k, and it ups my DPS from 404,000 to 421,000. Now, when I use my pulse, and they're both on the cooldown, you'll see that my toughness goes up to 430,000 versus the 381,000 toughness that I had before, except now the DPS is gone. Despite it being very elusive, very, very elusive, it's an extremely useful utility and it provides you with really helpful perks when you're in the heat of the moment, and it gives you a leg up in those situations. Mine dropped for me with pretty decent rolls here, but it's not anywhere near perfect. Always remember that armor should be rolled on every piece that has the ability to do so, and that's every piece except the mask. Ideally, I'd want to have health here, where the health on kill is, because the 6,000 health bonus would benefit me way more than what this would, but you can't really always ask for a god roll and you're never always going to get them. And always make sure that your chests have ammo capacity too, as well as your backpacks, because they are the only two that can roll ammo capacity. Now, moving on to the backpack. Specialized, adds 200% of firearms and stamina to skill power. 256 gear score specialized backpacks grant you over 100,000 skill power in patch 1.5, so you'll be set to go with your heals and other skills. Note that with this backpack, you do not need to spec into electronics whatsoever. You can focus on your firearms and stamina instead. Remember to roll armor on your backpack if possible. Note that I don't have any ammo capacity on this, just because it's just a product of bad luck and, um, yep. <sighs> Now on to the gear set pieces. Alpha Bridge hands down is the best gear set if you want a high DPS and a gun that shreds NPCs and players health faster than a paper shredder on steroids. It's really, really, really bad. Starting off with the mask here, it has damage to elites as the major attribute and 9% enemy armor damage as the minor attribute. As many of you already know, enemy armor damage now functions in PvP along with PvE. The two pieces that you should roll enemy armor damage on is your mask and your knee pads. Keep on the lookout for pieces with these minor attributes. It's really, really, really important. Don't overlook these. Now moving on to my knee pads. My Alpha Bridge knee pads have a really decent armor roll as a major attribute. The minor attributes are enemy armor damage, increased kill XP, and disrupt resistance. Like I said before, enemy armor damage functions in PvP, so you're basically increasing your damage to players while you're getting the armor shred in PvE as well. Keep an eye out for the increased kill XP also if you enjoy getting fuel proficiency caches. I know I do. My gloves have assault rifle damage, critical hit chance, and damage to elites. Always make sure that your gloves in an alpha bridge build like this are rolled to the weapon type you'll be using for the gear set. The damage to elites here is also a bonus if you like to PvE, but critical hit damage would also be a great choice. Lastly, the holster. I consider myself relatively lucky with the rolls here, but anything goes as long as you have the holster you need. Roll armor here, as always. Now, as for the main stats, the firearms, stamina, and electronics, just roll whatever you want to get what you want. Personally, I'm running 6,200 firearms, 5,900 stamina, and 2,700 electronics. As a side note, a viable option for your main stats is to spec and do firearms until you unlock talents like Brutal and Responsive that you can see right here. They take about 4,800. What you should do is to spec into firearms until you reach these and then just spec into stamina all the way. It's not how I'm personally running this build, but if it works for you, then go for it. Looking down at the survivability of the build, my armor mitigation is about 53.5%, while my health is at 177,000. Now, like I promised in the beginning of the video, here's another combination of pieces that you could use and whatnot, and this especially looks out for the console players out there. 
Two Strikers is a great choice when it comes to this due to the 20% stability that it offers. As long as you have the 4 Alpha Bridge, your 2 piece can be whatever you want, but I do recommend Striker when it comes to stability because it's very, very, very useful. Now, to the gear mods! I basically run all stamina mods with the same 271 armor roll. If you guys haven't seen, there's a pretty near god rolled stamina mod at the East 42nd Dark Zone checkpoint. It has 261 stamina and 271 armor. Pretty dank. If you need a firearms mod, there is one at the DZ04 safe house located here with 263 firearms and 241 armor. Okay, now that that's over, I can finally move on to the weapons. Thank the lord, I've been waiting this entire vi- The weapons are the centerpiece of any alpha bridge build, and boy, do mine like each other very much. I'm running a police M4 with deadly, swift, predatory, destructive, responsive, and uncomplicated. Let me just say it before we go more in depth, there's an extremely well rolled FAMAS at the Meat Locker safe house in the open world. It has destructive, unforgiving, and uncomplicated. This thing is the perfect secondary for an alpha bridge build, and is what I'm using personally. The reason why FAMASs are so valuable is because of this talent. Uncomplicated. Damage is increased by 15%, accuracy and stability mods reduce this bonus. This is a sheet damage bonus of 15% for your primary weapon, so you can see the appeal right there. Get this FAMAS while you can. It's only available during this weekly reset. If you miss it, any FAMAS will still do, but the value here is unreal. For your talents, part of why this FAMAS is so good, make sure that you have Destructive, Inresponsive, Brutal, or Deadly, or whatever you want that uh, supplements your build. Destructive was made a god tier perk in 1.5 because of the fact that enemy armor damage applies in PvP. This is also why assault rifles are the most appropriate for this build. They come with enemy armor damage pre-rolled. All of the bonuses from my gear and weapons applied, I'm at 57.5 percent enemy armor damage. You'll be sitting at near 100,000 headshot damage with over 130,000 crits when PvE. Enemy armor damage I believe is cut in a third to determine how much it applies in PvP, so that would be a near 20% damage buff to players. Heck yeah! I would recommend an M4 or Lavoa C if possible to use as a primary. Don't be too vocal about your saltiness to get these weapons though, because uh, they're never going to show their face if you do. Because they know you want them so much. I really, really, really need a Lavoa. Really bad. Now, a brief overview of the weapon attachments. I don't really have too much going on with them, but I'll just go through them so you guys can see them. Bam. My final per bullet damage on my M4 is 22,752. My crit chance is not too large, and same with my crit damage, but this build is on PC, so headshot damage is more viable. However, if you're playing on a console, then critical hit chance and damage would be your best friend. Switch out the headshot mods for critical hit chance and damage mods, and if it makes you feel better, then go for it. Overall, this amounts to over 400,000 DPS, which I couldn't even fathom before I actually achieved it. Now, the DPS is a tad inflated due to my total of 60% reload speed, but who cares? My DPS is 400,000, so suck it! I run a Tactical Scanner Pulse and First Aid Overdose. My Tactical Scanner Pulse has about a 20% critical hit chance and a 21% critical hit damage. It helps tack more damage on when PvPing and PvEing, so BAM! My First Aid, with the bonus from Lorraine Barrett's chest piece, is sitting at about 108,000 health. Note that I have zero self-heal performance mods. They seriously, I, I have never seen one on PC. For the talents, I use Combat Medic, Precision, On The Move, and one is none. If you play in a group, use combat medic. One of the farming techniques that I'll talk about in a little bit needs everyone to run combat medic, or you're probably gonna die. On the move makes you harder to kill when you kill an enemy while you're moving, which happens really, really, really often. Precision is more damage tacked on to your already very, very, very spicy meatball of a build. And of course, one is none. Since I don't have ammo capacity on my specialized bag, yeah, I need this bad. Also, another note to the console players, the steady hands talent as well as the striker two-piece stability do not lower the uncomplicated 15% bonus. That bonus only goes down if you put attachments on your weapon, so use these if you need to recoil to go way down. So that's the meat of the build! Now let's talk about its PvE and PvE use and how you can farm for some awesome pieces yourself. PvE off the bat is a blast, soloing missions like Lexington is a breeze with this build. The near 60% enemy armor damage absolutely melts down the armor of every single one of these Rikers, it's dreamy, seriously. Even if you don't spec into any damage to elites like I did, you'll still have no problem shredding the NPCs. Even though I'm still bad at PvP on both PC and console, this build really carries me through. 
Especially if you get those headshots. They will die very, very fast. Also, the bonuses that the Barrett chest piece grants you helps you in nearly every situation while playing the game. Some little tips and locations I could give you for farming is Lexington Event Center for the Barrett chest piece, obviously, high value targets, and clear sky on challenging mode, not heroic. Challenging Clear Sky to me is one of the most valuable places to gear up for a few reasons. 1. You get 270 Phoenix credits and 90,000 credits per run. 2. Fuel proficiency caches drop like hotcakes when running this. And 3. It's really not that hard on Challenging if your team is the least bit of useful to you. So if your team is garbage, then... I'm sorry. The build is honestly one of my favorites that I've ever created, and that's why it's my best build for 1.5. Granted, there's still work to do with getting the perfect rolls, the basis that is set up here will set you up for the entire future of 1.5. So that is it. That's the end of my best build for 1.5 video. As I update this build and get more builds going, expect more videos in the future. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like this, then a like and a comment would mean the world to me. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. You're pretty cool for doing that. This has been Tuxedo Bird, guys. Peace out.